Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Pure Nintendo podcast. My name is Gemma, and with me this week I have a, a dynamic duo of them of themselves. I have Trev. Welcome back, Trev. Hi. Um, you know, I was thinking, you always say hello, hello, and I don't really have a good greeting. <laughs> Maybe I'll do hey, hey, like Christy hey. the Clown. Hey, hey. Yeah. Let's try that. Let's try a new one each week and see what, what sticks. <laughs> And with me, as always, I do have Kirk. Welcome back, Kirk. It's good to be here. And now I'm wondering if Trevor and I are the uh, dynamic duo. Which one's the leader and which one's the sidekick? <laughs> good wow. question. Good question. Um, I don't know. You guys might have to fight that out amongst yourselves. <laughs> Excellent. Another excuse to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Once that AEW title comes out, you can do it you know, <laughs> virtually as well. So <laughs> right. we'll take it out in the squared circle. <laughs> yes, exactly. But thank That's you for joining. Wrestling, I presume. Yes, <laughs> yes. Remember, Kurt gave us a, he gave us a rundown. I almost said SmackDown. He gave us a rundown of that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, welcome back. And this week we're going to talk about quite a few interesting things that popped up during the week. But before we get to those, let's do, I guess, our common uh, update of the of the moment, which is a Tears of the Kingdom update, just to see where we're at in the game, because it is something that's consuming our lives a little bit. And I loved Trev during the week posted a, a GIF in our group chat on Slack. It was uh, quite hilarious because it was what was it? It was Marge being frustrated because she couldn't, you, you, your caption was me trying to play something else or write something else when I just want to play Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> yeah. And I can relate. a brave smile on her face, but yeah. it's like, <laughs> and it's not that the games I'm playing are bad. I mean, they're, they're all actually good if, as mm. you'll learn when my reviews post, but it's, it's not Zelda. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. I know. You kind of have to force yourself away from it. It's uh, it's just that addictive. But with that in mind, Trev, because you let's start with you. You you just been hours and hours ahead of of us for, since the beginning. What's your what's your week been like in the world of Hyrule? What's been happening? Well, I was hours ahead, and if you just count number, I, I probably still am. But I've uh, maybe reached my great uh, plateau, so to speak, because. <laughs> I still haven't beaten the game. Um, we are in our, our fourth dungeon, but we've really been spending a lot of time in the in the depths. Uh, in fact, I think there's only one maybe area we haven't lit up. Oh wow! So uh, it's it's hard to tell because it's like I keep looking at the map and I'm like, wow, did we fill this all up? And then we find you know this itty bitty gray spot, and we're like, nope, we got to go there, and then. We find another one, and some of them are so tiny. I'm like, why would they even have a light here? It's like getting light from <laughs> <laughs> around. But so we're working on that. I'm hoping something happens if we finish that, but I don't know. I haven't looked up anything. So, wow. Um, but it's been good. Yeah, a lot of a lot of just running around. Like we'll we'll zoom on the map and be like, oh wow, we have no no footprints here. Like we haven't walked in this whole area. <laughs> Let's just take off and. You know, see what we find, and maybe it's a Korok, or maybe it's a Lionel, or you mm. know, whatever the case may be. But uh, yeah, that's impressive. It. Yeah, wow. So fourth dungeon, so you you're definitely progressing well. Um, and I think Kirk, you were two or three in last week in terms of dungeons, at least. How's your week been? Yep. Well, I have now finished the just last night. I finished the fourth dungeon. Cool. Um, I, after that was done, I just kind of hung out in that area. I found a couple caves, um, to check out and some shrines. So it, it, the fourth dungeon was in an area that I really hadn't explored much at all. So I could spend quite a bit of time there, I think, before I push the story along. And that, that is probably what I'll do. Cool. Um, but I, I did abandon my, my horse riding tour. Of <laughs> um, it just started to branch off in too many paths. Oh, yeah. and in the process, I unlocked all the great fairies. Really? Oh, wow. Yes. How so, many um, are there? I, I haven't been able to take advantage of their um, armor leveling yet uh, to the degree that I would like to because I don't have the right pieces, <laughs> uh, monster parts to really get the good stuff. Um, but well, once I start to collect those, I'll be all set. Wow. That sounds really cool. You yeah, definitely- it's like my wife will I'll be running and she'll be like, Oh stop. She's like, We need those. She's like, Can you creep up and grab 
whatever the fireflies or whatever they are. And it's like, okay, <laughs> sure, I'll try. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. I um I was thinking of you, Kirk, actually, because I was doing some traveling around the outskirts of Hyrule, uh, and stumbled upon another yet another stable. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if Kirk's found this one. <laughs> yeah, and then I this is actually just last night. I ran into uh and you guys may have already done this, um, some of those Yiga uh assassin type people. I don't yeah. really know what they are. <laughs> and I I, I have this yeah, I, I felt I think I fought two. And then I, I was looking at this, I was walking up this hill to this ancient actually I was following a dragon, one of those sky dragons. I was like, ooh, a sky dragon. And I went up to this ancient tech lab that was nearby, near near the stable. And I knocked on the door and it's like, oh, who's there? Wait, it's you. And then out popped two of these Yiga uh, oh, yeah. warriors. And I was like really taken aback and not prepared. And I just did everything I could. And I somehow beat them. And then I walked over to pick up their, you know, the things that they had dropped. And then lightning hit and killed me. Oh, and- no. <laughs> and I had to fight them again. And so I've stopped there because I died the next time I tried. Oh. And I haven't beaten them again. So I'm just like, are you serious? I got killed by lightning. <laughs> that on. was a tough fight for me because we, we mm. did that fairly early. And um, what ap- actually happened was we like, I think we beat the big guy. And then we like got too far away from the building and it like kind of reset the fight. And I'm like, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, the big guy's the hard one. I can get the, the I don't know, the girl, I guess, if she's a girl. She looks like a girl. I, I forgot to paraglide one. up too from the drafts. Like I forget about that. So mm. at first I'm like, what do we do with this guy? Like, <laughs> And then things started coming back to me from Breath of the Wild. but. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's been so long. Uh, so, so that was, that was funny. But speaking of dragons, the other cool thing that happened to me during the week was I actually did land on one of those dragons. I don't know what they're actually called. I'm just calling them sky dragons, but it was one of those, you know, elongated kind of Chinese dragon looking things. Um, and it was the electric, no, 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 no. It was the cold one, the, the ice one, whatever. I was so excited because I was up in the, in the sky area, uh, and I, I, I was running out of, I had to take um, some food to give me some cold resistance because it was in a very cold section of the world and I was running out of time. <laughs> so I had limited time on the dragon, but I was running around, you know, getting the little shards and I just loved, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm on a dragon. This is so cool. I showed my kids, I'm like, kids, look, I'm on the dragon. And they're like, wow. And then I had to, dinner was in, this is like, I was literally playing for 10 minutes uh, one night while dinner was cooking. And then the timer went off. So I had to go to the oven get the food and I'm like Harrison here take over just just ride this dragon for a few minutes while I finish <laughs> finish dinner and he jumped off and accidentally dived into the oh, ground no. and died. <laughs> you should have sent him to the oven and you should have kept playing. <laughs> I know. So the save point was prior to the dragon so I had to do it again which is fine because it was exciting and fun and it was just such a funny thing to happen so yeah it's those moments I think this week where I'm dying from lightning or diving accidentally <laughs> and having to read it did it. remind me of something and and I won't elaborate uh, for spoilers but I did get the master sword uh, oh, this week nice Kirk you have this I think um I do not I no. I, I know where it is uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, it wouldn't be a spoiler of Trevor were to reveal, but I still won't. But uh, <laughs> no, I, I haven't gone and picked it up. Wow. That's exciting. I want to get the Master Sword. I really need to progress further with dungeons and the like. But I like like you, Kirk, I did find an area. I found a sky tower. It's kind of northeast, I suppose. And there were heaps of shrines around there. So I got sort of excited. I'm like, oh, shrine, shrine, shrine. I need to do those because I want to get some more hearts uh, and stamina. So, yeah. And then I think when I hit when I hit uh, the right level of hearts, I think then I'll then I'll attack the dungeons and yeah, that should be really exciting. I'm really looking forward to it. But yeah, I'm just having so much fun with it as I have been for the last what three almost a month now. It's been out actually, which is unbelievable. It's That's crazy. crazy. Yeah, and there's yeah. still a lot of fun things to discover um, along the way. I do want to talk about one of my favorite, most embarrassing mm-hmm. deaths because um, what <laughs> sure. was I doing? I was. I had just killed a bunch of of enemies on one of those platforms and they had a bunch of boxes that I was going to smash. And I thought I don't want to damage my, my, my stone hammer that I concocted. So I decided I was going to burn them. 
so I picked them up and I put them on fire. Or put, I guess it was just one. And then I walked around it to get another one. And the moment <laughs> I walked around, I realized there were a bunch of those like dynamite barrels <laughs> right behind the flaming thing. And it was almost like Link saw it and turned and looked at me on the camera like, you <laughs> idiot. And then just bam, everything exploded. <laughs> The time was so perfect in a cartoon. I should have filmed it. Oh, that would have been um, good. Yeah. yeah, so he blew up or blew up. Link died, and, and yeah, I hung my head in shame and went. To <laughs> Classic. Yeah, that's funny. I do love that. I can just imagine the look on Link's face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You're doing this to me again. Yeah, like a cartoon. And he's like the Wally Coyote. He just keeps coming back. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. yeah. holds up a little sign that just says "Eep." <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh man, that is good. Someone needs to Photoshop that into a to a video where he dies. <laughs> Classic. Do you have any uh, spectacular deaths to mention, Trev? While we're on the topic. Um. Well, I was at a uh, an enemy camp, and uh, so I climbed up high, and there were some, you know, red exploding barrels. So I'm like, oh, I'll th- I'll, I'll throw this down there and just take care of it and i guess i underestimate the range of them <laughs> i blew myself up but i had a fairy <laughs> so and, and jen had just stepped out of the room so <laughs> i'm like okay i died but she won't know the fairy yeah. saved me <laughs> i grab the other barrel i drop it even further <laughs> still not far enough i blow myself up again <laughs> so she comes back and she's like what i miss i'm like um i, I like, died and used both fairies <laughs> she's like what <laughs> And That's you can't keep her a secret too, because she would have been like, "Wait a minute, what are these X's on the map?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. <laughs> and explain. It, it, yeah, and the fairies aren't at least I, I don't think they're all that common to find. No, uh, right. or maybe there's a trick to them. I haven't figured figured it out. So, um, but yeah, it's I, I like having that safety net, and then. Mm. It's just, yeah, that was embarrassing because I did it twice doing the same thing, essentially. <laughs> so. Yeah, if at first you didn't succeed. <laughs> yeah, but they have some, they have some quite, quite the range. Um, mm. And I've done that with bomb arrows too. Like, I feel like I'm plenty far away, but, you know, it turns out I'm a, I'm a little too close. So I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I've done that too. And I've arrowed a, one of those TNT barrels uh, too close <laughs> with a fire arrow or something to blow something up. And I've been, yeah, within range and like, no, that was a bad idea. <laughs> and it's yeah, spectacular. Like they're so cool, but sometimes they're more trouble maybe than they're worth. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like a, like a, like an action movie explosion. It's just, <laughs> if you recorded it and slowed it down, you know, and made a sound effect in the background, like no, or something. I don't like know. Like <laughs> those Mario Kart replays when you do the slow motion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> slow motion explode. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, it's good to know about the only one dying in strange and interesting ways. <laughs> so that's cool. Yeah. There's probably a collection somewhere on YouTube. Someone's probably done the top 10 deaths of Link. <laughs> I think the best are when you're at like the top, the highest point on the map, and then he just like keeps rolling down the mountain. Like yeah. as it's game over, it's like doo 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 doo, and he just keeps stumbling down. <laughs> yeah. Spe- speaking of rolling down the mountain, uh, I don't know if you've done this, especially Kurt, because you're you're fond of the Koroks. <laughs> I um some sometimes I see a Korok who needs to find his friend, and he's just down the hill. So I was walking them down the hill, but it's quite slow, you know, when you've got Ultra Hand holding them. So I just kind of put him down and he rolled and I followed him down the hill and I felt bad for him, but it was much faster. Have you, have you yeah, tried they, this? They, they do tend to slide and roll a lot. Those, those mm. little fellas and you're like, like chasing them, trying to grab him with ultra hand. Cause he's about to go off a cliff. Yeah. Like, come on, grab something, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> yeah. Cause another one I had to put down, like I, I had to, because there was an enemy starting to attack me. And I'm like, come on, I'm just trying to help this Korok. So I put the Korok down, fought off the enemy turned around the Korok's not there anymore. I'm like, Where, where'd you go? And he's rolling <laughs> off down the hill. I'm like, oh, my gosh, come back. So I'm chasing him, ultra-handing, come back. Wrong way. Your friend's that way. <laughs> if he really wanted to see his friend, though, you, you take something out of that huge knapsack or whatever. It's like yeah, it does have a huge it's like those animals that get caught in the trap and all they got to do is let go of the food. But they won't stop me. <laughs> they don't let go. It's like is it like when Homer's holding onto the vending machine goods? Like it's like Homer, yes. are you just holding on? <laughs> is 
that and I was thinking of when Lisa was babysitting Bart and he was like unconscious and like he fell out of the wagon when Chief Wiggum was questioning her and he's rolling down the hill. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Like, that could be like a Korok. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, but I do like reuniting them. I feel good about it when I can. You should get more than two two things. I think you should get like five because it's, it's kind of <laughs> It is a pain. Like I just like I got to that Eastern Stable, wherever that is, where the Yigas were, and you know, there's a there's a girl. You know, I'm just oh, I'm just on my way to one thing. I got to the stable. Suddenly, there's uh, some bokoblins or something riding a horse with a carriage that are attacking people. So I've got to take care of that. Then there's a girl who says there's a, a group of pirates down on the beach, and I've got to take care of them. Then there's oh, this yeah. guy. There's this guy saying, "Oh, if you follow this trail, you'll see the horse god. You should really go do that." Um, and then a Korok's there wanting to meet his friend. I'm like, I've just got given 10 things to do. <laughs> Come <Poor on>. Zelda. <laughs> yeah, right. We're on a mission here like- and Link has ADHD. So every <laughs> single thing that pops up, he's distracted by <laughs> taking care uh, of something else. <laughs> I know. I can see my, my quest list just expanding exponentially. I'm like, oh, geez, Louise, I'm just going to do this. Okay. Let's do you roll feel up like you run out of icons for the map? Oh, I do. Constantly. Yes. Like I'm always putting up the colored ones because they're the easiest to spot. And then yeah. I'm like clicking and I'm like, what? We don't have any left? And it's yeah. like, what was this red one for? What was this purple one for again? Like mm-hmm. That happened I mean, when I was, yeah. Sorry, Kirk, you go. I was going to say, I've gone back to some and there's literally nothing there. <laughs> I, I don't even know what I marked. Was I falling asleep when I did this? Was, did, I, did I just misplace it? But that's happened a couple times. That's uh, funny. The joy kind yeah. drifted. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we could say link drifted because that's our new term for dying, isn't it? Drifts. Yeah, I guess, right. <laughs> Yeah, that happened. And because I, like I said, I just found all these shrines in this area where I'm currently exploring. And I, I'm like, oh, I've got to mark that mark. I marked one, I marked another. And then I went to mark the third and there's nothing. I'm like, oh, well, I guess I should head for that one <laughs> while I can see it. <laughs> and then, or, or should I head for one that's closer, get rid of the mark, and then I can mark the other one. But then like you lose it. You're like, oh, where is it again? That's why there's markers. <laughs> uh, oh, man, we yeah. had a mark in the sky. And we're like, for the life of us, we're like, we're looking every direction. We're like, we can't see it. It was actually like underneath us because the uh. sky is so, so big. And because we're like, we're looking up thinking maybe it was above us and we're looking every which. Yeah, it was under us. We wasted so much time. <laughs> like, we should just look down, but we thought we were low uh. in, in the sky, but not low enough, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's so much to it, honestly. Um that's awesome. I love that. <laughs> it's just, I'm going to, I'm going to listen to this and, and laugh again. Cause that was very funny. Uh, well, anything else with, with the legend of Zelda with tears of the kingdom Any, and the other tidbits we want to impart before we move on to other games. Did you tell us Gemma, if I know Kirk and I mentioned we've done dungeons, have you finally started any dungeons? No, no I was close to one. I saw the, the regional phenomena circle, nearby and I was like oh is this the moment where I go and attempt a dungeon but I was time poor and I, there was a shrine and I'm like oh I'm just good having said that though the shrine was really hard and it took me a good half an hour it was one of those ones where they strip you of all your kind of clothes and assets <laughs> and then you have to beat a whole lot, bunch of um constructs oh, yeah. yeah and this one it was fun but it, it, I died a lot it was like I think it was something to do with vehicles like you had to control vehicles uh, and oh. so I was like driving around in a circle, smashing into constructs. <laughs> yeah. Is that the one where they have like the big thing in the middle? Yeah. If you get into the middle, you could create like a, what, what do I quit? It was like, if you've ever seen the movie army of darkness, <laughs> yes, <laughs> where, where Bruce Campbell, where Ash comes in at the end and busts through that wall. And he's got his tricked out car with that, that thing on the front spinning and he's just taking out all the skeletons. <laughs> that's what I was trying to recreate. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It was I very, didn't. Yeah. I didn't get into the middle, though. I did beat them all eventually, but oh, I don't yeah. know. Boy, you get into the – I mean, you've done it, so you don't need to go back. But, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, <laughs> that middle thing is just loaded, absolutely loaded with weapons. That sounds so fun. I kind of want to do it again now, but also it was hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There were a lot of constructs. It must have been like 10. And they had those, like, fire whip things where they're whipping you. And if you get stuck, like, you hit them with the, with the little vehicle, just the little one. 
um, like a little scooter almost. And sometimes you could one shot them. You could just run into them and they kind of just break and die. But other times they get stuck and then they start attacking you while you're still driving. And you're like, no. And Link's still kind of steering. I'm like, no, Link, stop steering. Jump off, jump off, attack, attack. Uh, and then he dies. And it's <laughs> Eep again. So, yeah, <laughs> it's funny. All right, well, let's move on then. I think there were a few, there were quite a few announcements during the week that were interesting. Um, and I, I don't know, this is no, no particular order, just the order that I wrote them down. But I guess the first one that I actually saw was a new Pikmin 4 trailer. Did you both see this? I did. I, I was a little disappointed because they didn't really show any gameplay. Mm, mm-hmm. Like I like the narration and yeah, I guess it's cool to have a character creation, but I'm like, where's the gameplay? Like, yeah. yeah. And there were no actual Pikmin featured. I don't think, I don't think there were any Pikmin yeah. in the trailer. It was all about the, yeah, the people, the astronauts. It was a bit of a surprise, I guess we did. I, I didn't know. We didn't know that we had, you know, this feature previously, right? This is new. Mm. Mm. So it's interesting. It was, it, like you said, the the narration was pretty humorous, like the way they did the trailer, you know. Oh, there's yeah. a, I think Olimo crashes and then they send a rescue group and they crash. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> they crashed in Pikmin 1, Pikmin 2, and Pikmin 3. <laughs> yes. Well, that Akatate Freight, that's the name of the company, right? They need to uh, they need to either get better pilots or better technology. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like yeah. it's like that Monty Python skit. Like we built the castle and and it sunk. Then we built the second one and that sunk. And yeah. but the third one finally stayed up. Like, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, so, I just feel like for a game that's now it's only well like six weeks away. Mm, I feel like mm-hmm. we haven't seen for all that they've teased it. We haven't seen a ton of gameplay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, that's very true. And I feel like we've said this before that it seems to be Nintendo's, I don't know, remit or kind of marketing style at the moment to just not show a lot, you know, because we were in the same boat with with uh, Tears of the Kingdom. We just didn't see a lot until very close to uh, release day when we got the gameplay trailer and we got the other final trailer. So there might be one more before the game comes out, I guess, which, like you said, six weeks away. Um, maybe they're banking on it just being popular and not having any of the games at the time. Um, I mean, I, I wonder if, you know, character creation is cool, but for me it's more about the Pikmin than the astronauts. So I wonder if there's any other kind of creation tool in this game, like maybe a map creator or a Pikmin creator or I don't know. Mm. I think maybe. I don't know. That would seem ambitious. But... It would, yes, it would. But, I mean, how many years in the making has it been? Well, that's yeah, that's yeah. a fair point. It's <laughs> it was yeah. almost done in what 2015, it, so like eight years yeah, ago. Yeah, eight years, eight mm. years since you first uh, unveiled that they were working on it. Yeah, but, so it's a long time. So, a simple astronaut creation tool that doesn't seem like a lot to do in eight years, <laughs> I don't think. I mean, it seems pretty simple from what the trailer showed. It's just you know, you pick your color, you pick your you know, your head shape or your height, I guess. Um, a few other bits and pieces. Maybe there's more to it that they haven't shown us, but it looked fairly simple. And I think it's going to take a lot, uh, you know, of horsepower to, to power that sort of thing. Um, and it's not going to take a long time. And I'm guessing you just do it at the start. You just create your person and then you go off on your adventure. I'm not sure. So, yeah, it would it would be nice if it did open up more. I don't know. A Pikmin Crater might be a bit, yeah, like you said, a bit ambitious, uh, just even – how would they even do that? There's a lot of choices, but that could be fun. Um, I'm thinking more like a map creator for battle modes or something where you can place things around, something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That could, that could work with Switch Online. I mean, they could hmm. probably do something good with, like, online, either competitive or cooperative. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Or- yeah, so maybe you have a team of like baddies and then a team of Pikmin, and like oh, he's yeah. the bad guy. You gotta try to eat as many Pikmin as you can. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see, that seems twisted, but it does. <laughs> yeah, it does. And I mean, it'd be tricky as well because if you create, say, uh, you know, fire enemies, but you haven't given yourself any red Pikmin, that's gonna be difficult. And if you haven't, if you if you sort of build those uh, like crystal shards that you need rock Pikmin's to break Pikmin's. 
not pigments, is it? Just pigment, I guess. Rock pigment to break. Um, but then you haven't given yourself rock pigment. So there's a few constraints, I suppose, that you might need to put in place. Otherwise, the maps would be unplayable. I don't know. <laughs> those electric fences that you need yellow pigments to build. Uh, sorry, it's not break. Mario Maker. Most of those levels are unplayable. Yeah, but. true. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah maybe it's just trial and error <laughs> uh, that would be fun though if they do that then we can start playing them and and we used to do that remember we used to play- yeah they were there were some good ones i don't mean to to do mm. blank criticism because there are there are some good ones but yeah it was fun we used to get the fan submitted ones and we'd go through like the top 10 or whatever for the month or that was, was that for the magazine i can't remember now but that was yeah that was we fun. did it in the it used to be in the question block and then I think we played them on, on YouTube for a little bit. and mm, Yes, yes, that's true. Yeah. So who knows? It could open up a whole new world of possibilities. <laughs> but, yeah, time will tell. So uh, we'll wait and see. The other, Well, another uh, announcement. I, well, this was an announcement as opposed to that was a Pikmin 4 trailer. We already know Pikmin 4 exists and it's coming out in July. This one was a, an entire game announcement and Kirk did a write-up on the site about it. Um, it was Sonic Superstars. What were your initial thoughts, Kirk, since you did the article? Uh, well, my initial thought was, boy, this would have been a great announcement for E3. Yeah, true. Uh, they, Sega could have had a big old booth and a big old presentation about uh, um, Sonic Superstars. Um, I, I think it looks really good. If it, For those who didn't see the trailer or aren't aware of it, it pretty much is just a ramped up modern version of the classic 2D Sonic style gameplay. Um, but it's all new. I don't exactly know where the superstars comes from. They're just four characters that you're playing. So isn't that everyone? I guess not. No, there, there were others over the years, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But it looks fun. It looks fast. Well, the graphics look really good. Um, the gameplay looks like what you would want. So if you're a fan of the old Sonic games, it's, it's more in lines with exactly what you want from the franchise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, Trev, did you have thoughts? Yeah, I'm uh I'm looking forward to it. I I think Sonic is at his consistent best when he's in, in 2D. Mm. Um I am wondering like it showed, you know, four player co-op, but like with the speed element, I'm wondering how that's going to work trying to keep everyone on screen. Mhm. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's one of those situations it might be equal parts fun and frustration, but maybe they have some kind of, I don't know, tethering mechanic or whatever to keep everyone <laughs> kind of together. Um, and I also wonder, because I think they mentioned like DLC and this is, this is a full price game. This isn't like, um, you know, Sonic origins where it's more of a, a, a mid tier price compilation. This is what, like fifty nine ninety nine. So I hope we get a lot of bang for, for our buck. And I hope they don't try nickel and diamond us with like uh, soundtracks or anything like that. <laughs> I did notice that price tag. Yeah, it's a full price game, which is, I mean, I guess it's good. I mean, it must be a big game. It's not just a like a little, you know, sub game with a, I don't know. I want to say fan-made collection because we have had fan-made games, but they were really good. But because they went from Sega, they were not full price right so it's like mario i guess in a way you know a platformer from mario is still going to be a full price game i don't know i i mean i like sonic i haven't played a lot of sonic recently i have fond memories of playing it uh, as a kid i do agree (laughs) four people can be fun yet frustrating in mario platformers and he's not as fast as sonic so <laughs> i am wondering how that's going to work and that was my my initial thought as soon as i saw four people together i'm like yeah someone's gonna get left behind like straight away and i mean <laughs> I, we've i mean we've played other games where it kind of has that like rubber band type thing mm. but i just feel like like sonic is is speed is is really the focus mm-hmm. like it is a platformer but it's it's a speedy platformer it's you know yeah. that's and they usually usually thing. have multiple routes to take so mm-hmm. people be, could be going in completely different directions um, well not dur- they're all going the same direction but one's going up one's going down mm-hmm. and you know yeah. That. yeah unless the screen splits but i can't see that happening like the footage didn't really highlight 
enough of how that would work because mm. they were all kind of together. Yeah. <laughs> yes. maybe, maybe, enough, maybe if you got good maybe, communication, you know, maybe you can do that. But <laughs> maybe it's not local co op. So everyone's just, it's four player on separate screens. Oh, oh you know what? Yeah. That, that seems obvious now that you say it. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Yeah, that would actually be pretty cool. Oh, that that's got to be it. Yeah, I'm overthinking it. It's got to be. It's got to be. Wait, do we know? Well, let me see how they said it in the press release. <laughs> I thought they, see, I thought they said it was local, but maybe it is online. Maybe it's both. Maybe, maybe you can play locally together, but hopefully there's also that. See, online. I'm looking at the article you posted. It says local four player co op. Mm. Okay. So, well, you um, can't trust me. I probably, <laughs> the game's not even coming out. I just made it up because I wanted something to talk about. And, um, <laughs> They're viral. No. Yeah, you no, did that, a good job with the graphics. That's exactly how they phrased it in the press release. So that's Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Maybe it's local, but everyone needs their own Switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. That's, uh, that's one way. And their own copy of the game. So that's going to be fun. But for full <laughs> price, I hope they have it polished. Yeah. Yeah. Same. It could be fun. I mean, yeah, the 2D, like you said, Sonic is at his best, consistently at his best when he's in 2D. The 3D ones, they hit very hit and miss. Yeah. Uh, as and, much and as that's <laughs> the thing, the consistency, that's what you, that's what made Sonic, you know, rule the, the early to mid nineties. It was mm. consistent quality. And then you kind of got, oh, he's still good, but not, not every time, you know? <laughs> and then it's like once in a blue moon for the blue blur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. So when was the release? Did it, was there a release date for that? Fall 2023. Fall. Okay. So that's uh, kind of a few months away, right? Like September, October, November-ish. Yeah. Sometime it that could period. actually even be, because technically winter doesn't start till what, third week of December. So it, it could mm. be right before Christmas. True. But I bet you it'd be closer to like at Thanksgiving so they get the Black Friday shoppers. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, that could be interesting. I mean, it said there were new worlds to explore as opposed to, you know, uh, kind of Green Hill. Green Hill, yes. Yeah, Green Hill zone. Night zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that that's that's something. There's like a whole whole lot of new levels to explore. And maybe it's a bigger game. I don't know. Because uh, Sonic traditionally doesn't take a long time to play through. Usually it's pretty quick. I mean, he's quick, right? He's fast. So not the longest yeah. of games, but, you know, if it's got other elements that keep it feeling fresh and give it some longevity. I mean, I did notice, <clears throat> sorry, and they did mention also uh, new powers. And I think at one point they turned into like jellyfish or something. Yeah, that looked yeah. kind of fun. Yeah, that looked cool. And it, it looked easier to stay together in jellyfish kind of mode <laughs> than when you're running. <laughs> But also when they were doing, when they were showing off the four player localness, uh, they weren't running very fast. <laughs> you know, they were kind of just together being, being a team. <laughs> so yeah, they probably did think of that. Like, oh, we can't really show people getting lost on the screen. <laughs> so yeah, it would be very interesting to see how that turns out. So yeah, maybe they'll yeah. do like their own. Like Sega Treehouse thing where you'll see four of them sitting together <laughs> and playing and <laughs> to demonstrate it. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Probably. Who knows? Cool. Well, that's one to watch for. And I suppose we'll hear more about it uh, over the next few months, I guess. We'll have a maybe another trailer that does address <laughs> these concerns. But I think overall it sounds like we're very positive about it. Uh, it does look, like you said right at the beginning, Kirk, it looks really, it looks nice. I like what they've done. It looks more 3D in a 2D world, a little bit, I suppose, a bit like Mario, but yeah. I'm Less wondering with uh, they show Fang the sniper there, like kind of going from the the 16 bit look to the to the new look. Like I'm wondering, is there going to be like um like some kind of flip mechanic where you can like mm. change from the new visuals to classic, like on the fly? Could be. There's been games that have done that, but. Mm. With a game as quick as Sonic, that'd be uh, that would impress me if yeah. they could do something like that. That would be interesting. Yeah, that would be cool. I'd like to see that. Uh, or maybe you start. Maybe Green Hill Zone is the classic two D retro style, and then you, every game's got to start with Green Hill. Yeah, or some variation of <laughs> right. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then you, you kind of finish it or you go through some portal, maybe into another world. I, hey, I'm thinking very uh, laterally or outside the box now. I'm just like going it's off on like a tangent. Multiverse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every week, Trev, you just like to bring up multiverses, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> If multiverses, do, uh, <laughs> if they're actually real, like in in our real world, not just Thanos's world, um, you know, you would, I, will, I will say Trev called it. <laughs> Trev called it. <laughs> if they're real, there's a Trevor at a multiverse right now discussing multiverses. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere you go, he's the exact same guy yeah. talking about yeah. the exact same thing. <laughs> oh, that blows my mind. Yeah. There's one, there's probably one Trev who's like, no, there's no, there's no. <laughs> and he's <laughs> never seen an episode of The Simpsons. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that's just not my kind of humor. You oh, know? It's like- <laughs> the anti Trev. I mean, it's it's a little, uh, I guess it's like, isn't there one, yeah, this is a bit off topic, but there's one Kang who's supposed to be the good Kang. In the Marvel franchise at the uh, moment, I don't know. You know there's one yeah, king who's trying to stop all the other kings, but I don't know if I believe that king. So I don't know which Trev. I don't know which Trev I'm talking to right now. So. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm the watcher. I, I can only observe. I can't, yeah. I can't <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, we'll see you next week. Because if you if you don't remember what we talked about this week, I know it's a different you from a different multiverse. Like. <laughs> Maybe in the other uh, dimension, the Pure Nintendo podcast is the number one podcast in the world. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Probably, right? <laughs> it would happen. Yeah. Well, thank you, other multiverse. Let's see if we can match that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, this one I don't know anything about, but this is another announcement, I believe. There's a question mark after this on our show notes. Uh, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Was that announced during the week? Yes, actually. I yes? think that may have just been announced today. Ooh, fresh um, off the press. From from Ubisoft. Mm-hmm. Cool. What do we know about this one? Maybe not a whole lot. <laughs> uh, well, what I know about it, the reason I, I'm the one who added this to the list is because Prince of Persia was a game that I used to play back in the late 80s, early 90s on my Mac SE. In, in black and white, it was one of the first platformers I ever played. Oh, wow. Um, and they've updated it a few times. Mm-hmm. It's now very much a, uh, uh, it, it's kind of, it's a platformer. It's another 2D slash 3D platformer. It involves an awful lot of running around, jumping around, fighting, um, the high action kind of game. And uh, I, it's just something I saw absolutely nothing about. Mm. Um, in fact, I believe it may be the first new game in the series in nearly 15 years, I want to say. So uh. an inter- interesting revival for Ubisoft. Yeah, right. I thought it's something I hadn't heard of for a while. 15 years. That's a that's more than Pikmin or Zelda combined, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Okay. Well, yeah, I don't know. A lot. I mean, I have played, I think I played it on the Super Nintendo, maybe. There was a Prince of Persia. Back in the day, yeah, they yeah. the uh, original game made made it to a lot of even the NES mm, uh, as right. a version. I, I played it on the uh, the Sega CD, but mm-hmm. um, you know, it was one of the early what they call cinematic platformers. You know, where games like uh, like Out of This World and Flashback kind of did the same thing with the animation. <laughs> mm. Which I I mean, obviously, the games have kind of gotten away from that. You know, if you're talking about like like the GameCube and Beyond Prince of Persia's, but uh, yeah, the original was cool. <laughs> yeah, right. Cool. I didn't even know the original was black and white, so I've learned something new today. But yeah, that's exciting. So was there a – so did uh, Ubisoft – I say Ubisoft. I've probably been saying it wrong this whole time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Does Ubisoft uh, – have they always owned this franchise or did they take it over at some point? Boy, I don't Tuck. know. I, I assume they took it over. Um, mm. yeah, I'm sort of assuming they weren't the original well, let's developers. Go back and see. Yeah, the original <laughs> was developed and published by Broderbund. Boy, that's a game. Or that's a name that uh, I've forgotten about. <laughs> but man, they had a lot of good games. Really? Yeah. Cool. Uh, for the yeah, the PC and Mac. Um, okay. Yeah. But, nice. Uh, they should bring yeah, out a so I'm not bundle. sure when they took it over. I do know that there <laughs> was a Prince of Persia game <laughs> that came out. 
for it was for the Wii that maybe the last time there was a game available for Nintendo um, was oh, wow. the Forgotten Sands. Oh, that was sounds available for familiar. The Nintendo Wii and the Nintendo DS, I believe. Was that also was that the name of the movie? No. That was something else. Oh, boy. Oh, that's that they did have the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you, Kirk, what you thought of the movie because, you know, you're a fan of the games. Uh, what did you think of the movie? <laughs> never, <laughs> Which is if, never saw the movie. Didn't even didn't even go down that path. <laughs> no. You're just like, no, Jake Gyllenhaal is just oh, not. Oh, Gyllenhaal. No, yeah, I like him, but mm. yeah. <laughs> I don't okay. think it did Mario uh, movie numbers. No, I saw it. I'm pretty sure I saw it at the time. Maybe at the movies. Uh, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> pretty sure. I don't remember. I feel like, yeah. I, feel I, like remember. I should have seen it because it might have had sword fighting skeletons in it. Did it have sword fighting skeletons? Well, all I remember was that Jake Gyllenhaal was in it. So. <laughs> I probably. And there was sand. I'm pretty sure there was sand. <laughs> so. Did it take well, place where there's sure? sand, there's sword yeah. fighting skeletons. Yeah. Well, now it sounds cooler than you know, I thought, so maybe it's worth revisiting. You should watch that during the week on your movie night, uh, Kirk, if you get to choose. <laughs> Prince maybe of Persia. I, I don't think it's my turn, but maybe I can convince whoever it is that uh, this is a movie we need to watch. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on, it was announced today. we got to watch it. It's the, it's the right thing to do. <laughs> yeah, I do recommend everyone check out the trailer for this game because um, there was, I, I questioned the choice of music that they used for it. it seemed kind of mm-hmm. inappropriate for what we were actually watching. But the gameplay looks fantastic. Cool. I'm intrigued then about the music, as I'm sure Trev is, because you love the music. Um, yeah, do you mean it just doesn't match the style? Like it's just different to yeah, previous that, well, Yeah, that would, that would be it. I'm not yeah, criticizing okay. the music itself. I'm saying it seemed wildly out of place for what we were, uh, for the setting. Right. Is it like a modern uh, modern song? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of like a hip hop slash rap. Oh, kind of thing, okay. Know, which, you know. Interesting, weird. but I'm yeah. also a, a fan of the more cinematic um, mm. orchestral compositions for games. I think they add more to it than than that. To, so, mm-hmm. don't want to come like- across as critical on any particular style of music. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I feel like sometimes the trailers will, will pick tunes that don't even like, like make the final game. Like sometimes. Mm-hmm. Developers will show like a preview trailer and I'll be like, oh, is this music from the game? And it's like, oh, sometimes it is. And then other times it's like, nope. Or, yeah, sure. like even in the case of Prince of Persia, I'm not even sure if the original had like a full soundtrack. I feel like it had musical cues that would come up like when you accomplish certain things. But yeah, it was I, very, it was a quiet game, wasn't it? From I memory? feel like, yeah, it was one of those maybe sporadic, sporadical musical games. Mm. But, I just remember it being very hard. <laughs> oh yeah, it was tough. You only had like an hour, I think, like of actual real time. Oh. That was like the uh, the Sultan's hour class or whatever. Oh, that was the gimmick. Yeah, the time was running out. Yeah, okay. Well, they can't do that now. Like, you need now more I than just want to play the original. <laughs> I don't want to play this new one. I just want to play the new one. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder uh, where we could do that. That that would be hard to get, I imagine. Anyway, well, it's not I have be... a Mac SE in my basement. It still works, I think. So, oh wow! <laughs> come on over, we'll fire it up. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> that had to have been that. That game has to be available on some system as like an em- emulation or a, yeah, you know, in some kind of package. Yes, I would imagine so. Well, let's let's find out during the week. <laughs> That's cool. That though. Like the game they could bring to like Switch Online, like either yeah. the NES port or the SNES port or. Mm-hmm. Something mm-hmm. That. Definitely. Well, nice segue, Trev. Speaking of the uh, yeah. switch online, <laughs> totally intentional. <laughs> yeah, very well done. Thank you, Multiverse Trev. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they dropped Nintendo dropped four new titles to the online collection this week as part of the eShop uh, Roundup digital download. And yeah, so four games, two Game Boy games, one NES and one SNES. And I wondered what we thought of this collection. I haven't, I haven't tried them. Disclaimer: I have not tried. I haven't had a chance to try them uh, because Zelda exists, so that hasn't <laughs> happened. <laughs> but they're still worth talking about because there's some interesting ones in there. But let's start with I think Trev, you because you actually have played. At least one of them. I, I, so, yeah, I played a couple. Um, 
because you do, you know, you got to take a little break from Zelda every now and then just to like <laughs> relax your brain. Mm-hmm. Like depending on what you're working on, some of the shrines are so. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Is that traffic? <laughs> are, you, are you playing them now? <laughs> <laughs> It's a little uh, loud. Something going on. No. Um, so, yeah, in between some of the tougher shrines, it's like, yeah, I'll kick back with some. Not that Blaster Master is, is easy by any stretch because that's always been a hard game. Mm. Um, I actually can't figure out if the Game Boy Color version is just like a. It feels very close to the original, but a little different. So I'm not sure if it's like a a full sequel or like Blaster Master 1.5. Like, mm. cause I was playing it and I'm like, wow, this is just like, I remember the NES. I'm like, Oh wait, no, it's a little different, but, um, so I got to play more to figure out exactly what's up with that. Yeah. That's a good point. What is um, the official title of it? It's Blaster Master. It has a subtitle. Like enemy right? below or something. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I've never, I, I, again, I wonder if this didn't, see the light of day in australia <laughs> so, oh, I, I didn't even know this title existed before uh, before I this mean, week. it looks good it sounds good oh, it plays like i expected but it's just one of those i, I can't figure out if it's a, a sequel or a remake or exactly where it takes pl- i think it's supposed to be after the first game hmm. but i gotta play more of it like i said i've only played maybe half an hour if that Oh, yeah. It does say it's set after the events of preceding titles in the series timeline. So I suppose it is meant to be a sequel, but it's probably very similar in style, I'm guessing, right? Yeah, it's quite, quite, especially if you haven't played the original in a while. Mm. Yeah. um, I dabbled with that a little bit. Cool. That's cool. And it looks like it. um, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, it did come out in Australia, or at least in Europe, in 2000. So, sorry, that was my bad. And it looks like it was also on the Virtual Console and the 3DS. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Oh, yeah, I think I remember seeing it there. Cool. Like, I, didn't, I didn't own it, but I think I remember seeing the uh, icon. Mm. Have you? What's your experience with Blaster Master Kirk? Have you played the original or this version at all? I have not. Um, I haven't played. I, I, I didn't grab any of the new games, and honestly, I'd never heard of that one before this, so... Everything that you guys just said was my introduction to Black. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Welcome to Blaster Master. <laughs> Good game. Very NES hard. NES hard gamer. Game Boy hard, I guess, in this case. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> it does have that reputation, I think. Yeah. The thing about the original, and obviously it's not an issue playing playing this on, you know, uh, Switch Online, but it didn't have like a, a save. And it was, a, it was a long game and a tough game. So it's not like I, you could play and then come back in or a password. So you really had to kind of hunker down. Um, at least with the Game Boy on the Switch, you know, you can just hit, hit, make a save state or whatever. So mm. that'll help. Yeah, that's true. So it's developed by, <clears throat> excuse me, Sunsoft as well, who's mm. been around a while. Um, I wonder why they've never rebooted this franchise. I thought it was a pretty popular series. Oh, they do have... Um, they do have some Blaster Master, uh, newer Blaster Master games on the Switch. Okay. Wow, I didn't even know that. <laughs> you didn't review one? Uh, no, no I, I'm oh. guessing not since I don't recall it, but you know, thanks yeah, to TV. Yeah, Blaster Master um, <laughs> a Zero, which I think was like a, I think maybe that was like a remake of the first, maybe kind of uh, yeah, <laughs> a remake be. of the Game Boy Color one. I think when they use the word zero in the title, it does sound like, you know, a reboot kind of thing. Like Yeah, that's on Switch. They had it on 3DS, I think, too, but it's on Switch. Mm. And um, I feel like it goes on sale. Not that it's a terribly expensive game. I think it's like a $10 game, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm pretty sure you can find it for half off sometimes. So. That's cool. Have you seen it? Add it to your wish list. Is it worth it? You You recommend? Uh, well, I like the original. I haven't played. Mm. I haven't played the newer ones, but uh, as okay. long as you're for the, uh, as long as you're for the challenge. <laughs> yeah, I remember actually as a kid. Somehow, there was a book version of Blaster Master. Like maybe it was a choose your own adventure, even. Oh, one of those like Worlds of Power books or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. It was like a like a novel. You know, I feel like I remember novel. those. Hmm. Because I've never played any 
Blossom Monster games, but I know it from the book that I read. <laughs> so, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm almost 100% that they have demos um, that you can download off the Switch if you want to just try out a demo. Oh, that's cool. Something to I'm do. I'm pretty sure I yeah. did that on the 3DS. So. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll uh, I'll think about it. <laughs> I I'll mean, think about it. Do it. Yeah, but Zelda. <laughs> no, wait. Load it up right now. We'll keep talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, the, that other, the other gem was beating all the Blaster Master games and loves them. So, oh really? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to talk to her. Um, She's listening to cool. this, being like, "Oh my god, I can't believe it." <laughs> <laughs> Who even are you? Oh my gosh. Uh, well, I'm I'm the alternate version of you. Come on, so <laughs> it makes sense. Cool. Thank you. That's a good wrap up of Blaster Master. Um, and it does. Yeah, it's probably worth checking out. And it, I mean, if you're if you've got Switch online, it's definitely worth checking out because it's just there and it's free. So even if you just are curious and spend five minutes with it, I suppose that would be something. Um, the other one, well, I mean, there were four, so that's the first of the four. And the other one we've written down though is Mystery Tower. And is this because you've tried it, or just because it's interesting to talk about? Uh, no, it's because I tried it. Okay. Um. Because it sounded like I I kind of do the the eShop post every week, so I see what's out. And this one sounded intriguing simply, f- I mean, the premise itself is intriguing in that you're in a tower, right, and you, there's puzzles you got to complete to move on to a level. Mysterious tower. Mis- yeah, mysterious tower full of mystery. <laughs> um, <laughs> but also it's not been released uh, in Western sort of territories previously. I think it's it was a Famicom game back in like 1986 or something. Yeah. So Which it's the first. Neat, because yeah. We've only gotten a few of those like officially. Mm. Yeah. So. so I think that's really cool when we get something completely new for for us, you know, for Western audiences. Um, but if you tried it, tell us your experience so far because I've not tried it. I just read about it. <laughs> uh well, it is. It's new to, new to me, but it plays old. Um, mm. And I guess what I mean by that is they. Um, so it's sort of like a like a puzzle platformer mm-hmm. type thing. And I remember my character dropped off a ledge um, of no consequential height, very short, and and he died. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, this is like. Uh, like Donkey Kong Jr. or Spelunker here or something like he, he's got no <laughs> it's like I'm half a pixel off and he's dead so it kind of shocked me wow but at the same time that's a lot, how a lot of the, those old games played right like mm-hmm. it's not like Mario where you're doing you know parkour off the walls or whatever or, you know Sonic where you can <laughs> yeah. like maybe in the original that didn't happen but he actually aged so <laughs> the character is is now 40 50 years older and more brittle. Yeah. <laughs> On my hip. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it seems more to me, seem more more puzzly than platformy, which isn't bad cuz I like this type of games, but it's similar to Blaster Master like I didn't I guess spend more than a half an hour mm-hmm. to really get get used to that that flow and feel cuz it is very much Dated and not just NES dated, like it, it's very it almost like, um, you know, like an older, like PC type of game, maybe t- to me, yeah, yeah, so that old school feel, that's yeah, the- just very fragile, very fragile. Uh, <laughs> how many game. do you know how many levels there are in the tower to sort of beat? I do not, mm. and how many, maybe it's a how- mystery. <laughs> That's mystery. It's endless. How many did you get through? Do you know? Oh, not many. Not mm. many. Even the first one was tough. Um, right. Not really. Mm. I don't want to say tough, but you know how like games nowadays, like there's always a level to kind of show you like the basic functions. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of three in. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. okay, oh, I got to like drag this over here and step on it. It's like a step. And then I don't have to fall this minuscule height because I can just step up here and you can go up but not down. Okay, sort of thing. (laughs) So it starts gentle enough. It's just basically like the you know the one screen. Mm. I don't know how complicated they get, but yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, Okay. Yeah. I I have the answer to how many levels there are. Do you want me to say, or do you want to let it remain a mystery? 
Well, <laughs> I, I want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> it, it looks like there are 64. Okay. Um, which oh. makes sense. You know, 64 is a popular number in the Nintendo world. Yeah. Yeah. And is the main God. player's name really Indy Borgnine? Because that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch that. I don't know. That is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. In like two words, indie Borgnine. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who decides to cross Indiana Jones with Ernest Borgnine? <laughs> yeah. But I love it. I love the decision. <gasps> yeah. That is cool. And 86. Yeah. I mean, Indiana Jones was pretty big in the. Yeah. I don't in, know why they would have that. You think they would have did. Um, uh, who did. Uh, what was it Alan Quarter? Quarter Mine? King Solomon's Vines or whatever. Oh. Who did that one? I can't even think of his name now. No idea. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I have to edit this out. I can't. Oh, Chamberlain, <laughs> right? Richard uh, Chamberlain? Oh, good. Kurt, okay. come on. You, you're an 80s movie buff. You must know this. Well, I do know that Ernest Borgnine around that time was probably still performing on the TV show Airwolf about the helicopter. Oh, my so goodness. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's why. <laughs> Airwolf. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but. They had okay. an NES game of Airwolf. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, what was that based on the on the show then? Yeah, it's amazing right. how many NES games. Of course, this was before any ratings, but were based on like violent movies or TV shows. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, like, wow. Platoon had an NES game. Like, the Terminator. Like, the ter- all these- there was a Terminator yeah. one. Yeah, that was scary. <laughs> I look at this and I'm like, man, how did Nintendo let this stuff on? Like, it's just weird. But. Did it have <laughs> the, the, the Nearwolf game from Acclaim? Really? Who also did a Knight Rider game? And see, now we're getting off topic. Yeah, yeah, they, got, <laughs> they got the license. Did they do an A Team game also? <laughs> Seems like they should have. I don't remember that. But <laughs> I do remember Airwolf. <laughs> yeah. A <laughs> Team game. That would have been cool. There, surely there was an A Team game somewhere along the way. Well, there had to have been. Hmm. Maybe, Maybe Calico Vision or something. Check check your Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Multiverse Kirk is playing it in black and white. <laughs> my, my Mac automatically tunes me into all things 80s. It doesn't search me on 1986. <laughs> because, true fact, the 80s ended in 1986. <laughs> what? That's, that's when they quit being the 80s. Really? Yeah. Based on? It started in 79 and they ended in 86 and... One day because, I'll write a dissertation on why. <laughs> Does that just mean nothing good came out after 86? <laughs> nothing 80s specific. Nothing that felt like the 80s as mm. a guy who lived through them. That's in interesting. Yeah, okay. I wonder if that's the same for the 90s. You know, like, uh, you know, grunge and like yeah. stuff was big in the early 90s. It wasn't really big in the late 90s, but you th- associate it with the 90s. So maybe it's hey, the same. Did Debbie Gibson come out? There's nothing more 80s than Debbie Gibson. <laughs> Debbie was mid 80s, I, I believe. Wow. Cool. <laughs> well, <laughs> I. <I'm> so <laughs> That's right. I've learned. I'm learning a lot, though. This is great. Did, did a claim make a Debbie Gibson game, too? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't think so, but I do seem to remember a cover that had a girl that had the Debbie Gibson like hair. So, <laughs> well, that could have been anyone. Yeah, Ninety yeah, percent of my high school at one point had Debbie Gibson like hair, <laughs> boys and girls. Cool. Yeah, but when you post this on YouTube, you got to pull a clip from a Debbie Gibson music video. <laughs> as long as you don't play the music, they won't flag you. So, <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'll have a look. Oh, <laughs> Any particular song? Well, no, we're not doing music, so it's fine. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for that flashback. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've, we've lost our entire audience by now. <laughs> <laughs> we can say whatever we want. Um, <laughs> well, let's just wrap up the other two online titles, even though we haven't played them. There was a Kirby title, which was uh, yeah. Tilt. Was it? What's it called, Trev? Tilt, Tilt and-, and Tumble. Was a Game Boy Color game that had a uh, a funky cart with like the gyroscope built in. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason I didn't play this because uh, when I loaded it up, it was a little late, and I'm like, oh, I'm too tired to try to learn the Switch like motion <laughs> controls. <laughs> yeah, but I am excited about that because I'm a I'm a big Kirby fan. 
So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe next week you can tell us what it's like. I, I felt bad for not even he- having heard of this game before, but I did check and it was not released in Australia. So not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> it just wasn't here. Um, was but it sounds- in Australia? Uh, probably. <laughs> I don't know. Is that Was that an arcade game? It sounds like an arcade game. Oh, I don't know. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking of one of those top-down shooting kind of things. No, it's not like that. Okay, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what was the fourth? The fourth game was uh, Harvest Moon. Oh yeah, which, Harvest Moon. Yeah, which I keep thinking I should try, but I just I'm not a sim. I just I'm not really into Sims. So I think that's where the series maybe originated. Yeah, I think so. I do believe so. Um, Kirk, are you into Harvest Moon or Sims in general? I, I think I, I haven't played any of them, but of the four games that are here, I think that's the one I would most try. Uh, it would be interesting to try because of all the games that came out after it. I know there was a split, like the, the people who are working on Harvest Moon now that's not the original developer, right? And they yes. went on to do Story of Story what, Seasons. What, yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so I, I think I would like to play this a bit and see see how the series started, and you know, they, mm. um, plus those games are really big now. They they could take a long time, and I imagine this one didn't. So I True. might be able to work all the way through it just because it's so old, and they didn't have the memory for larger games or the yeah, that's a good you know, point. Technology. Mm. Yeah, I'm curious. I do want to give it a go just because I the Super Nintendo is kind of my favorite era anyway so i'm sure it looks mm-hmm. cool at the very least I and think this was yeah. a late super nintendo release if i remember right like mm. i think it was after the uh the 64 even oh wow so okay that would very have been what, like 97 something like that yeah okay interesting well yeah i mean i'll check it out i think i think i'd like to check all of them out uh that's what's cool with switch online like a lot of these whether it's famicom games or or late releases, maybe people moved on and missed them back then. You know, they're able to experience them again now, or if they're not even in their region. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it's great. I love, I love when new games come out into the Switch Online collection. So, yeah, it's just tearing myself away from Tears of the Kingdom to actually try them. So, I'll, uh, I'll try to make an effort to do that. <laughs> Multiverse Gem has already done three dungeons. Yeah, I know. I'm so, so far behind. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Multiverse. Uh, Gemma can then come along and uh, provide some tips and spoilers. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Help you out along the way. Walkthroughs. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to the, to the day when we can meet and greet our counterparts <laughs> in different dimensions. <laughs> Wait, will that be a paradox, though? Ooh. Yeah, I don't know. Or back to the future. Did they lie to us? I, I, I can't keep track. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's that's a question for next week. <laughs> well, this has been a super fun discussion. I hope our listeners have laughed as much as us <laughs> because, uh, yeah, that was great. Thank you very much to you both, Trev and Kirk. <laughs> um, Are you able, Gemma, with analytics mm-hmm. to see, like, at what point of the episode people drop off? It's got to be around the time we got into like Airwolf and Debbie Gibson. And all that. <laughs> well, on YouTube you can. Yes, I don't uh, think I can. I, I don't think the actual podcast gives me that level. Oh, maybe it does. No, it, might, it actually might do that. Oh, uh, I can check. Yeah, or maybe I'll see a spike and you'll be like, "Wow, maybe." Look at that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we're gonna Probably. get the Debbie Gibson Airwolf crowd that's been out there waiting for the the podcast specifically <laughs> for them. Exactly. Uh, an market. <laughs> Yes, exactly. I think, <laughs> yeah, we've, we're onto something. So <laughs> yeah, no, that was, that was really fun. Thank you both very, very much. Um, and thank you listeners. If you like what you hear, please, uh, please give us a, a rating on one of the audio channels, Spotify or Amazon or Apple, or leave us a like on YouTube. Uh, feel free to comment as well. We'd love to hear from you as to what you liked about the show or what you'd like us to talk about in future shows. And we will see you all next week, I guess. Yeah. So thank you. Until next week, game on. <laughs> <laughs>